Good morning, Potcoins. Today is Sunday, 10 August 2014. We are currently on block 38, 71, 52 of the pot chain. Here's what's been going on this week. Pot Funder makes the world a better place. Last week, the donations made to the Fragile X Syndrome research campaign on PotFunder were paid out to Fraxa to conduct further studies on how CBD can help Fragile X Syndrome. The community raised $2,000. Here's a clip of Russell from PotCoin thanking the community. Hi, I'm Russell Thomas, CIO of PotCoin Systems, and this is my family and my son Jack. My son Jack has Fragile X Syndrome, so we started a campaign on PotFunder, largely funded by the PotCoin community, and we raised $2,000 in support of cannabis as a treatment for Fragile X Syndrome. We'd like to thank the PotCoin community and everybody who contributed to this, and thank you, Fraxa. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. PotCoin is not just about getting stoned. It's about growing a community that helps each other out and makes the world a better place. None of your beeswax. This week in Russia, police attempted to raid a marijuana crop and failed epically due to an innovative security system, bees. The cops tried to destroy a 500 plant crop and were severely attacked by bees. A few were hospitalized. Turns out humans are not the only species defensive about pot crops. And a bunch of angry beehives is a fairly good security system. Next step up, growers should have landmines protecting their property, and they should be able to have surface-to-air missiles to guard against helicopters. Drive safer. So far, since the legalization of pot in Colorado, the total number of traffic fatalities has gone down significantly. Is it because people drive better when stoned? Probably not. Maybe because if people don't feel like driving because they're stoned. Maybe more people are smoking pot instead of drinking. It doesn't matter. The important point to note is that the opposite of anti-pot activist predictions have come true. Idiots still keep saying that pot is dangerous and that legalizing will lead to more traffic fatalities. But the evidence supports the claim that those people are stupid. It's the same logical fallacy as saying that traffic fatalities go up when winter coat sales go up. This is a true statement, but there is no causality. Traffic fatalities and winter coat sales both increase because it's winter and there's ice on the roads. Another logical fallacy is that some victims of fatal car crashes have tested positive for pot. This is because the test looks for metabolites that break down THC in the body. So someone could test positive even if they smoked days or weeks ago, and there is no way to prove that a person was stoned at the time. I'm sure autopsies would also confirm that most victims had food in their stomach, but no one is accusing them of eating while driving. Wikipedia accepts Bitcoin donations. Partnered with Coinbase, Wikipedia has already received over $140,000 in Bitcoin donations. And WikiLeaks is able to survive because they were early adopters of the Bitcoin. There have been a lot of stories recently about regulating Bitcoin. Some people believe that regulation is necessary for Bitcoin to go mainstream claiming that the general public won't trust it till a government tells them to. Regulation is not the answer. It's the problem. A problem that Bitcoin was created to solve. 
Regulation created the Federal Reserve and caused the Great Depression of the last century. And it was responsible for the Great Recession of this century. And if we let it continue, there's no telling what horrors might come. Playing by the rules is not the problem. The people creating the rules are the problem. A few thousand profit at the expense of a few billion. If any regulations are to exist, they should come from the crypto community. They should be voluntary and fair. They should not be created by the governments or bankers that are stealing and destroying the wealth of humanity. The last century created the greatest advancements in enslavement through debt and destruction through war. It's my hope that this century will make bigger advancements in bringing people together and respecting freedom and property rights than the last century did for literally tearing people apart. And the only way that can happen is by taking away the monopoly of money from the most corrupt and evil people on this planet. If we want to stop the abuse of power, we need to stop giving away the power to abuse. We can keep that power. We can keep our wealth. We can change the world for the better. And if the general public isn't ready for that, no one should push them. If it takes 10 more years for mainstream adoption, then so be it. Adoption needs to be organic, not forced. And we can't compromise the good of the world because the general public isn't ready for independence. We can't let regulators destroy cryptos just because it might lead to faster adoption. Everyone wants profit now, but maybe we should put aside our greed and take cryptos underground for a while and focus on the spread of information. That taxation is theft. That the fractional reserve banking system is the biggest scam in all of human history. That the initiation of the use of force is wrong no matter what, with no exceptions. That's the message that will lead to mainstream adoption of cryptos. People need to be ready to see the truth of what's going on before they'll be ready to adopt cryptocurrencies. That's all for this edition of Mad Pot Coins. Smoke them if you got them. One more thing about regulation. How come no one ever asked Nate Dogg or Warren G? Regulation.